Item Number SCP-006-FR Threat Level Orange Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-006-FR is to be contained within SCP-006-01-FR under the supervision of Site-LF. Three D-Class personnel must remain inside of SCP-006-01-FR at all times and ensure that the metal shutter located at the entrance of SCP-006-01-FR stays open. Six armed guards must be present at all times outside of SCP-006-01-FR. All personnel who wish to interact with SCP-006-FR or enter SCP-006-01-FR must be vegetarian. SCP-006-FR appears to be a typical male human butcher of Eurasian descent with a height of 1.87 meters and a weight of 112 kilograms. The subject only speaks Russian. SCP-006-FR wears a bloodstained cooking apron, butcher's foot hat, checkered shirt and beige pants. 98% of the time it has on a belt which holds many miscellaneous kitchen utensils, such as knives and choppers. SCP-006-FR is not normally aggressive but it has the physical strength and resistance equal to five times that of a normal human of the same weight and height. In addition, it can also instantly teleport to SCP-0061-FR, as well as teleport any butcher utensil present inside SCP-0061-FR into his possession. SCP-0061-FR is a common oblong-shaped butcher's shop with dimensions of 5 meters by 10 meters by 2.75 meters. There are two rooms on the inside of SCP-0061-FR. The first room, which is located directly after the entrance, is 5 meters in length and 7 meters in width, and includes a normal counter expected of a butcher shop, as well as the entrance to the second room, located behind the counter. The second room is a freezer which is 5 meters by 3 meters. After teleporting, SCP-0061-FR will appear in either of the two rooms. The choices of locations to which it teleports seems random, but it has been noted each locale's population of similar density. SCP-006-FR can only teleport if the metal shutter on the entrance of SCP-0061-FR is closed. The greatest recorded distance for an SCP-0061-FR teleportation is kilometers. The first reported occurrence of SCP-0061-FR was in the 1940s, but it was not contained until 1996 when it localized before SCP-006-FR could teleport it. A recovery unit was dispatched and successfully destroyed all buildings around SCP-0061-FR before towing the exceptionally heavy building back to site left. SCP-006-FR only appears outside SCP-006-01-FR if he's attacked inside SCP-006-01-FR. If this occurs, then it will proceed to follow the aggressors until they are either dead or outside the 150-meter radius around SCP-006-01-FR. When the entity finishes hunting, or it can no longer hunt the aggressor, it will warp itself into the freezer of SCP-006-01-FR. If SCP-006-FR is wounded heavily enough by the aggressors, then it will stop hunting immediately and teleport itself into the freezer where he will stay for one day. This seems to be a recovery mechanism, as it allows SCP-006-FR to heal all wounds which it may have sustained. SCP-006-FR is unable to perform any other activity while it is recovering, even a potential non-vegetarian customer will not cause it to move from the freezer. Normally, the entity will stay in the freezer and keep its door closed. If a vegetarian enters into SCP-006-01-FR, then the entity will stay passive and nothing will happen. When a non-vegetarian human enters SCP-006-01-FR, however, it will enter an active phase where it will get out of the reserve and treat the subject in SCP-006-01-FR as a customer. The subject will always ask SCP-006-FR to give him his favorite piece of meat. The entity will then enter the freezer and come back with a package. The package will contain the subject's favorite piece of meat, but while he's in the reserve, 
SCP-006-FR will somehow take meat of a similar cut from the subject. Despite this, the subject will stay alive and attempt to go home with the package, even if the piece SCP-006-FR took would usually cause a fatal or immobilizing wound. One instance includes a D-Class personnel who started crawling back to its cell after it ordered pig feet. After reaching its destination, the subject will start to consume the uncooked packaged meat and then immediately expire upon finishing it. The research team led by Dr. Grimm is studying if SCP-006-FR uses specific waves to control the subject or if this faculty is purely psychic. Electroencephalograms made on subjects while they are under the influence of SCP-006-FR show that the part of the brain responsible for decision-making was heavily damaged sometimes to the point where it resembled a lobotomy. The first theory is difficult to demonstrate, as applying an electroencephalogram onto the entity would be probably impossible, but the idea has not been discarded. All attempts to force open the freezer's door or damage it using vegetarian personnel have failed. All attempts to enter the reserve using vegetarian personnel, while SCP-006-FR was in an active state, have not only failed but have also enraged SCP-006-FR further. In-depth research has found documents from the Battle of Stalingrad which show the dead body of a person who looks similar to that of SCP-006-FR, and reports from the Russian High Command. See Addenda 01-006. On An experiment with the purpose of observing the reserve of SCP-006-01-FR began. A non-vegetarian D-Class engaged SCP-006-FR, while two other vegetarian D-Class sought to gain entry into the reserve. SCP-006-FR became enraged when the two vegetarian D-Class attempted to enter the reserve as he left. SCP-006-FR then warped his chopper into his right hand and causing the death of all D-Class personnel inside the shop. A containment breach was avoided due to the intervention of on-site armed guards, who lured SCP-006-FR outside of the shop by provoking it with armed fire and engaging its hunt phase. The guards successfully harmed SCP-006-FR enough to force it into a recovery state and it warped back to the reserve. Containment was then re-established and SCP-006-FR was secured again. SCP-006-FR no longer exhibited signs of anger after recovery when the Foundation sought to determine the method of SCP-006-FR's removal of body parts from the recent casualties. There were a total of 15 casualties from this experiment, 3 D-Class personnel, and 12 armed guards. Further attempts to force or otherwise enter into the reserve of SCP-006-01-FR have been forbidden from now by the Director of Site Aleph. Interview A1-006-FR Interviewer, Dr. Grimm Interviewed, SCP-006-FR Began Log Forward The following recording is an interview between SCP-006-FR and Dr. Grimm through a vegetarian D-Class equipped with a communication system, while SCP-006-FR was in an activated state. It has been translated from its original Russian. Hello, 006. Let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Grimm. Are you able to answer some questions? Yes. I would like to talk to you a bit about your activities. My activities? What do you do once people enter your store? I have to admit that I often wonder why you act in that manner. There is no answer from SCP-006-FR for a few seconds, but it is apparent that the question has upset him. Nothing extraordinary, I'm just doing my job. What is your job? To make them aware. Aware of what? Of what they do to themselves. I help humanity be aware of… The entity pauses. Now, the entity points to a non-vegetarian D-Class who made him enter his active state. Please excuse me, I have a customer. End log. SCP-006-FR acted per its usual after the interview was terminated. Addenda 01-006-FR This is an article extracted from the popular Russian newspaper The Pravda, dated 1942, as found by Dr. Caroline. A traitor to the Mother Russia found and arrested. 
members of the PCUS discovered a group of mangled soldier corpses and an altar to a heathen god in the reserve of a well-known Stalingrad butcher yesterday as they were following a lead on suspicious missing persons from the Glorious Red Army. The news has spread quickly thanks to the Glorious Russian people and, as a result, the traitor has been executed in the reserve of his own butcher shop. Commissar Makarov, who was involved with the case and was asked his thoughts, later commented, this was a young man who was lost after the death of his parents. The enemy took advantage of this and used him against the Mother Russia. Those altars dedicated to false divinities, similar to ones we have found in Butcher Shop, are used for worship in Thule society, which Hitler is a member of himself. I cannot help but feel disgust at the cowardice of those fascist dogs. The butcher shop was later burned with body still inside. This document is from the personal diary of Commissar Makarov who was, at this time, the assistant of Messing, a Polish medium in the service of the Red Army's paranormal team. It wasn't the Thule Society who created this thing, nor was it Hitler's doing. It was us. Messing said he saw in his dreams a way to create the ultimate soldier, nearly immortal, who could bend space itself and be totally devoted to his cause to his job, to his work. For it to work, though, we needed a subject to die in a very specific way. And we needed to be sure the work we gave him will be of the utmost importance to him because, according to Messing, this would be the only priority of what we will create. He had seen the rituals, how to build the altar, and now we only needed to find the right subject. We needed someone lonely and desperate enough to accept going through the crazy ritual even if it was coming from the Mother Russia. We searched for people who had just lost their entire family from Operation Barbarossa and, after a lot of rejections, we found the perfect one. His parents and he had lived in one of the first cities to fall after Hitler started his attack. His parents owned a local butcher shop, and when meat became rare and missing, cannibalism started to appear. And those butchers were the apostles of this. All of them died. The young was the only one who survived and was able to successfully reach Stalingrad, where he did what his parents did, own a butcher shop. Once the famine showed up again, however, he did again what his parents did, cannibalism. It was at this time we went to him and made a deal. We would forget his strange dinners and would give him revenge for Wehrmacht if he joined us. He agreed. We made him hate Nazis more than he ever did before. We showed him how their thirst for consummation led them to invade us, and how their invasion led the Mother Party to famine without ever telling him a word about his necessary death for the process. We did the rituals in his butcher's shop reserve, which we believed to be the perfect cover for the Red Army if things turned to shit. We did what we were supposed to do, but in the last seconds of his life, the subject understood what was going to happen to him next and this is where everything turned to shit. At the moment the body of touched the ground, the reserve started to move, like an earthquake. Space began to bend and then we failed to contain him and, as we really didn't want him to reach the outside, we set the shop on fire. The next day, the shop had just disappeared. There were no ashes, ruins, or even an empty space between the two shops where it had been located. It was as if it had never even existed. God only knows where he is now, but this hate does not stop with Nazis or countries. We disappointed him. The Mother Russia disappointed him. Hitler disappointed him. Humanity disappointed him. Before he… I heard him say something about consummation society and everything it meant about humanity. We created a monster. The perfect weapon. He was supposed to have been turned into a killing machine pulled between duty and pure hate. But then I hoped that, although he failed his experiment, messing with right, I hope his last work, the one about to make humanity aware of what it was doing to itself, would never leave its butcher shop. Because if it does, may God forgive us all. Commissar Makarov killed himself just days after writing this. Messing went missing after the Battle of Stalingrad. The few researcher assistants who have been working on this project 
were likely killed in the events following the death of. Taking note of these facts, uncovering the research which made led to the rituals and subsequent creation of SCP-006-FR impossible. Research regarding messing is ongoing.